G'day Dave here. A bit more than eight years ago I lay in a hospital bed and I couldn't get these words of James out of my mind. Let me read them to you from James chapter 4 and verse 13. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then who knows the good that they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Friends, I was hospitalised with cancer days before leaving for Darwin. Uh, we believed that this was God's plan for us to plant a church in north of Australia. Uh, we'd made our plans. We had people to go with. We'd raised all the money that we needed for the first 12 months. We thought we knew what we were doing. And then diagnosis, stage four, lung cancer. Friends, we don't know. We don't know the future. We make our plans, but only God knows what is going to happen. These few verses, I think, are a helpful warning to us. They challenge our arrogant planning, our confidence, thinking that we're going to do this degree, we're going to get that job, we're going to buy that house, we're going to marry that person, we're going to travel to that country, we're going to achieve these things. Hey, we don't know. We don't know whether we're going to be able to do this. And if there's ever been a time in human history that's confronted us with what we do not know, it is now. How many of us thought <clears throat> last year that this year we'd be in lockdown? How many of us thought that millions of people throughout the world would contract the same disease? Who would have thought that the pattern of society in Africa and Europe and Asia and Australia is going to be just the same as we look to combat a disease? Who would have thought that their plans for their retirement, their plans for their travel, their plans for their study, their plans for their job, their plans for their home, all of their plans would be blown out of the water. See, we do not know. And when it comes to planning, these verses remind us, yes, we should plan, but we should plan in pencil. We shouldn't be arrogant, assuming that we know what we're going to be able to do. And there's a great reminder here where it says, instead, verse 15, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. We speak with confidence, we plan with confidence, but it's a misplaced confidence if we don't recognise that God is the one who's fundamentally in control. There's another reminder in these verses, and that is the brevity of life. If you want a picture of what your life looks like, then go and boil the kettle and watch it steam and then turn it off. There's your life. Look at what he says here. What is your life? Verse 14. You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. <sighs> you breathe on a cold morning. Your breath creates vapour. The vapour dissipates and it's gone. Friends, in the big scheme of things, that's our life. We are but here for a short time. Our life is brief. We need to recognise that our life is not our own. Our life belongs to God and that's why when it comes to our plans, when it comes to our thinking of the future, when it comes to thinking about what we'll do in education, in business, in career, uh, in life plans, in travel, in church, in relationships, in all of these areas, we should be the ones who say, if it is the Lord's will, we will do this or that. Friends, I've been gripped by these verses ever since my cancer diagnosis, having been reminded brutally that it's God who determines our steps. We make our plans, sure, and we must do that, but we cannot guarantee our plans. Only God can do that. And we need to be willing to pray, Lord, if it is your will. And if you think that prayer is a cop-out, let me remind you that Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he faces his death, says, God, my Father, if there is any other way, please take this cup from me. But not my will, but yours be done. It's a godly response to pray, if it is your will. 
Christians a number of years back used to be characterized by this saying, God willing. I'm going to church tomorrow, God willing. I'm going to buy a business next week, God willing. I'm going to start a new job uh, next year, God willing. I'm going to plan for a holiday, God willing. I hope I can come and see you next week, God willing. Sometimes they'd write it in a letter and they'd sign off that letter with these letters, D-V, short for the Latin, Deo Valente, God willing. Friends, are you prepared to allow God to shape your future? Because really, that's a step into reality. He will. And we need to realize that we're not God and we're not in control and we don't know and we can't control the future, but we can know the one who does. At this time of uncertainty, as we face challenges in life, as we are so uncertain about what lies ahead, we can be confident that God knows and so we should turn to him.